Thanks for investing in a HazSim system. HazSim is a state-of-the-art training system. It equips your hazmat teams and first responders with a realistic situational training experience. HazSim simulates chemical and radioactive environments. This hands-on, realistic, and interactive experience increases the effectiveness of your training for hazmat, USAR, confined space, anywhere portable detection devices would be used to monitor the environment. Three parts make up a HazSim system. The HazSim meter, the LAN wireless network, and the server that controls the HazSim monitor. The server can be a tough book or a tablet depending on the system that you've ordered. Operation of the HazSim is simple. On the tablet or laptop that came with your system, you'll find a HazSim icon on the screen. Double-clicking this will bring you into the HazSim software. Install the antenna on the LAN device. The LAN system power supply needs to be plugged into power and connected to the white LAN device by network cable. The cable will plug into the PoE port on the LAN. Once connected, the indicator lights will illuminate. This creates your wireless environment. To turn on the HazSim monitor, hold the power switch for two seconds. The HazSim logo will display until the unit is activated by the server. The LAN should be set up in an elevated position clear of obstacles for best reliability. In an area with no obstacles, the LAN can work as far as 1,000 feet away. But that distance can drop dramatically with obstacles such as vehicles and thick concrete walls. Be creative when setting it up and make sure to test the system in all the locations you plan to use it. Generally, the sniper position up high above the training area is best, but it can work in all sorts of areas. Here, it is in use inside of a command vehicle plugged into an inverter for power, allowing the instructors to stay in an air-conditioned space. Your server may be a laptop or a tablet. It will have the HazSim icon on the screen. Double-click on the icon and the software will open up. Assuming that the HazSim meter and the LAN system are connected properly and turned on, you will only briefly see the Waiting for HazSim client screen. Once connected, you will see the meter options. The HazSim system can emulate many types of meters, including chemical weapons and radiation. Custom meters are available. In this case, it's a four gas meter. From the server, you can raise or lower the readings on the HazSim in small or large increments. You can normalize each gas individually or normalize all of them at once. If you raise any values to their alarm value, you will see a red bar on the software and the HazSim monitor will beep. You can also buzz the monitor at any time to get the student's attention. Alarms can be edited based on local protocols or environments. You will find a three-column table with a listing for the monitor type, normal, and alarm level. Normals are usually set at zero, except for oxygen. In this example, we have set CO to alarm at 20. As the meter rises, there is no alarm until 20 is reached. Now, it has been set back to 30. No alarm will sound until the level reaches 30. To add a new alarm, click on the Add Alarm button. The system defaults to adding an oxygen alarm. Change the type of monitor to whatever you want. In this case, Phosgene. Set your normal level and your alarm level. Oxygen's normal is set for 18. When the number drops below that level, the alarm will sound. If you were set to any other gas to a number higher than zero, the HazSim will alarm if the value given is lower than the normal that has been set. At any time, you can change the meter to a different type. However, this generally isn't done mid-evolution. The instructor can send yes or no questions to the HazSim monitor for the students to answer by using the touchscreen on the monitor. 
You can modify these questions based on your local protocols. The student's answer will appear on the server screen. Questions can also be canceled by the instructor at any time. There are different sets of questions built into the system for specific training types, such as confined space. We hope that this answers your questions on the use of the HasSim system. For further questions or support needs, go to www.hasim.com, email us at info at hasim.com, or call 310-997-9030. Thank you for using HasSim.